Hello YouTubers and welcome to Fun Electronics Today. Today's video is about testing transistors. I want to give you three different ways of testing bipolar junction transistors. I use these methods almost every day in my daily job as a hardware engineer and shooting this video is a good opportunity to enrich others and to give something back. So here we are. The first method I'm using the most is the LED method. So suppose you don't have a multimeter around, simply grab a 5 to 12 volts voltage source. Connect the plus to the collector. Connect the anode of the LED into the emitter. And the minus in the cathode of the LED. This setup is very quick and you don't need to solder anything. Just use an alligator clip or something similar like I'm using in this example. Then open the junction of the transistor by touching with your finger between the collector and the base like this. It helps if your fingers are not very dry. Or by simply touching the base. Your body usually behaves like an antenna and will pick up some alternating millivolts from the environment. Chances are that your body potential is significantly different than the source voltage of the power supply and you only need about 0.6 volts to open the base emitter junction through the resistance of your skin. To buy us a PNP transistor, you would have to touch the base and the ground in the same time. The second method is using the diode function of a multimeter. You will have to set the multimeter to this diode function. For testing the NPN transistor, place the positive red lead on the base. Test both of the junctions as you would test two diodes in the same package that are having the base as the common lead. For the PNP bipolar transistor you must place the negative test lead on the base. Then test the inner junctions as you would test diodes. Depending on the type of transistor and the size, you might get junction dropout voltages between 0.4 and 0.7 volts. This test tells you if the internal structure of the semiconductor is being damaged or not. Testing the transistor this way will reveal short-circuited or broken junctions. If everything measures within the limits, it means the transistor is ok and will most likely behave normally in any circuit. I have seen some other weird cases with array type junction transistors that were only partially breached and were creating noise in PA systems, but since I don't have time to talk about that, I shall probably cover this subject in a future video. Before we go to the third method, don't forget to hit that like button and to subscribe to my channel for more interesting videos and tutorials. The third method for testing transistors is to use a multimeter that has a transistor testing function or to use one of these component testers I was showing you in a previous video. This is probably the fastest and most elegant solution for testing transistors as it will also give you the internal parameters and the pinout. Thank you very much for watching this video and I'm hoping to see you again on Fun Electronics today with more videos and more content that will help you have fun while doing your hobby.